Hello, my name is Daniel Balzani. I'm professor for mechanics at the Institute of Mechanics and Shell Structures, uh, which is situated in the Department of Civil Engineering at the Technical University of Dresden. My main research topics are biomechanics and modeling of microheterogeneous materials. Part of my research is to develop methods for the numerical simulation of membrane structures, such as the new roof of the main station in Dresden. Main advantages of these constructions are that they are translucent, dirt resistant and light, enabling a slim appearance with architecturally interesting shape. These membranes are typically composed of reinforcing fibers embedded in an isotopic matrix. This is particularly interesting to my research because this is a strong parallel to soft biological tissues. The simulation of these membrane materials requires new and more accurate modeling approaches that take into account the microheterogeneous nature of these materials. In our faculty of civil engineering, of particular interest is the investigation of fiber reinforced materials on the basis of concrete in order to develop new materials that have advantageous properties. It is important for me to not only teach a high level of fundamental and advanced mechanics, but also topics that are related to research. In particular, in biomechanics, um, students already learn how to work interdisciplinary, and this will be advantages in their later jobs. So basically uh, what the ta task this week will be about is modeling of fiber reinforced membrane materials. So first I'd like to acknowledge Anna Zahn, a co-worker of mine who helped me with preparing these slides. Um, and I, she would also, in addition to me, be happy to answer any question that you may have during this week. So first I will give a short introduction or motivation. Then I will explain some continuum mechanical preliminaries that will be required for solving this task. And then I will basically come to the two main parts of this task. So first, which I call task one, oh sorry, uh, task one will be uh, the calculation of a textile membrane of a lightweight structure. And the second task will be the calculation of an aorta under physiological blood pressure. Okay, with respect to the first task, uh, we will focus on textile membranes. These are typically used in engineering applications as, for example, lightweight roof, lightweight roof constructions, as exemplarily shown here, or also the roof construction of Dresden Main Station, and also facade cover design, weatherproof awnings, and so on. The main composition of the material is, as exemplarily shown here, um, that we have a rather isotropic um, soft matrix material and embedded therein we have a woven fiber network of rather stiff fibers. Those are the ones that are shown here. And they are rather wavy-like. In soft biological tissues we have a conceptually similar material composition where we also have an isotropic ground substance and embedded fibers here with respect to the passive response typically the collagen fibers that are arranged crosswise helically around this arterial wall. So those two materials are going to be basically calculated uh, in, in my task. So first, some continuum mechanical preliminaries that you may need. Uh, first, some assumptions. So we consider only idealizations as thin membranes, although we know that in particular diseased arteries may not be really thin. However, this is a necessary idealization to, to calculate this analytically. Then we focus on the small strain framework, although the materials undergo large strains, but that's just for simplification. And then we um, focus on a transversely isotropic model, which means that we have a, a stiff fiber direction A and perpendicular to this, we have isotropy. 
And we use this transversely isotropic for the representation of the individual fiber reinforcement. For these materials, we can calculate the stresses basically on the equation that is given here. So sigma would be the uh, stresses in the small strain framework. And these can be calculated by a derivative of this strain energy function psi, which is a function of the strain tensor for small strains epsilon, with respect to these strains epsilon. Of course, this specific strain energy function has to be constructed for the particular material such that characteristic stress strain uh, curves that are measured experimentally can be uh, matched. Here we focus on a, or, or let's say the particular strain energy function is given. So that's the specific form of the energy function that we consider here. It is decomposed into an isotropic part describing the matrix material and the superposition of two transversely isotropic parts that account for the individual fiber reinforcement. So that would be the transversely isotropic energy associated with one fiber a. So A is the summation index from 1 to 2. Material parameters in here are first the Lame constants here and this additional elasticity parameter alpha which captures the elasticity in fiber direction. So basically the one responsible or, or associated with the collagen fibers. Uh, J1, J2 and J4 are so-called invariants the basic invariance of epsilon given here, so trace epsilon and trace epsilon square, and the so-called mixed invariant, which is the trace of epsilon times m. m is the so-called structural tensor, whose coefficient matrix is 3 by 3, and the components ij are computed by the dyadic product of the preferred directions, the fiber direction a, so basically, that's the index notation AI times AJ, wherein AI are basically the coefficients of the fiber orientation vector. So uh, let's come to some remarks that are also required for the tasks. Um, the material parameters, in fact, the Lamé constants, lambda and mu, uh, can be calculated in terms of the Young's modulus E and the Poisson ratio nu by these formula. So E and nu will be given in the task description that you find online. Um, we consider in the task only rotation symmetric structures, which are parameterized by polar coordinates. So R will be the coordinate in radial direction, phi in circumferential direction, and Z in axial direction. Then we have um, neglected stresses and strains in radial direction and the shear stresses are neglected and strains. So this simplifies the whole problem significantly such that basically we end up with two out of the non uh, nine non-trivial equations that arise from this derivative expression. So in index notation we have this uh, formula where i is either phi or z. So we have basically two equations left, one for calculating the normal stress in circumferential direction, that would be sigma phi phi, or in an abbreviated notation where we skip the double indices, would be sigma phi, which is then the derivative of psi with respect to epsilon phi. And for the axial direction we have the normal stress sigma z equal to d psi with respect to d epsilon z. Let us now come to the individual tasks. So the first task is the calculation of a textile membrane of a lightweight structure. The structure is given here at the left. So you see this roof construction, for example, for a swimming hall. Um, and basically this shape is obtained by inserting an internal pressure, which is slightly above the air, normal air pressure, and that keeps the structure in shape. So it's an air dome, if you want. So based on this equation that we just saw, so this derivative, which is equal to the stresses, we basically have a set of two equations with four unknowns. So the unknowns would be the normal stress in circumferential and in axial direction, and the strains in circumferential and axial direction. However, as we can see from the boundary conditions here, 
This is something like a plain strain state with normal in Z direction. So basically we don't have any strains in the axial direction, which means that we can consider epsilon Z to be equal to zero. The stress in circumferential direction, on the other hand, can be calculated from Barlow's formula, which is given here. So PM would be the internal pressure, RM would be the radius of this membrane, and TM would be the thickness of the membrane. Here you see a sketch of a zoom, basically characterizing the main fiber directions. It's a woven fiber network, so we have the warp and fill direction. In this case, these directions are aligned with the polar coordinates. So what you should do here, once you know epsilon z and sigma phi, you can solve the system of equations for epsilon phi and sigma z, because these two equations only depend on two unknowns. And then you are asked to compare this with the ultimate values, uh, epsilon phi max and sigma z max, to check if this construction would be uh, basically okay or not. Maybe I should also mention in the um, full task description you find further small parts of the tasks and further details, so please uh, take a, a, a careful look at those descriptions. Task 2 basically considers the calculation of an R order under physiological blood pressure. So here you see a sketch of this idealized healthy artery. Uh, certain parameters are also given in the um, detailed task description. What we notice is that first the internal pressure inside these human arteries is significantly higher compared to the internal pressure in the air dome that we considered one slide before. On the other hand, the fiber stiffness is relatively low compared to the textile membrane. So the question now is, how does this structure behave due to the internal pressure? Therefore, you are first asked to compute in the same way, basically, analogously to task one, the values for epsilon phi and sigma z, and then uh, focus on this task, which is, yeah, I would say, a rather toy task, Basically, although technically impossible, impossible, uh, please check if you could in principle uh, construct the roof construction in task one made of arterial tissue that is considered here. So that's basically what I want to say about the description of the task today. Thank you very much for your attention.